So, question, real quick. No last statement, then a question, I guess. There's, there's been an awful lot of uh, banter back and forth lately across uh, certain social media channels about a topic that is, I don't know, sometimes I think it's, it's ignored within Christianity a lot, but I also think that it's, um, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a hard one to approach. Several years ago, do you remember when uh, Tom Cruise made such a big <laughs> splash in the headlines because of his discussion about like postpartum depression and how he was saying there's no such thing as mental illness and that none of these things exist. You just, you know, you just need to take control of it. You, you know, I think it's about the time you jumped up on the couch on Oprah and all that. It's been, it's been a while ago. Um, but but almost everybody everybody was looking at him, you know, kind of down their noses because, well, he's one of those crazy Scientologists, right? And, and so you can just kind of push it all off to the side. But over the last couple of months, we've had some, uh, specifically some, some fairly well-known um, Christians enter into this discussion about mental illness. And, and a lot of the things that I've read and studied over the years have been written by John MacArthur. And, and I like John MacArthur. I don't agree with him on a lot of topics, but I like John MacArthur, and I like it reading his uh, things that he's written. Um, but has anybody heard his comments on mental illness of, of over the last month or so here and how he has phrased things that have caused a bit of a, of a, a boil over? He has. He actually said in a panel discussion that there's no such thing as um, obsessive compulsive disorder. There's no such thing as um, uh, PTSD. Um, there's there's and he, he said there is no such thing as mental illness. Full stop. He talked about ADHD. He talked about all of these things that are diagnosed as different mental disorders and mental issues and said they don't exist. He said they have been manufactured by the drug companies and the medical personnel with the sole intent of trying to make money and sell drugs to people who don't need them. And then after a few days of uproar, he went back to uh, try and explain himself a little more um, uh, to give a more nuanced discussion. And, and essentially, he posted a very, it's like Moby Dick, you know, War and Peace. It's really long. Um, and he just doubled down on everything that there's, there's no need for treatment of these things because they are, they are a result of moral issues, they are a result of um, demonic possession. They are a result of, and you know, you can go down any worldly affliction, um, and that Jesus is the answer for everything. So, which which brings me to the, this this point of discussion, and the, the point of discussion is is this: if you are to look at things from a true hardcore Christian perspective, and we tell everybody that Jesus is the answer for everything. Is that the right approach when we talk about people who are experiencing something that they 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 can't they can't explain that they, they can't deal with? That I would venture to say that, that I'm not the only person here who has had panic attacks, who has had there times when I feel like the world is just literally going to. I spent I spent a morning in a, in a emergency room. Because I woke up and for whatever reason thought it was doomsday. I knew better. There was no question that I knew what was going on around me, but the feeling inside of me was they asked me, they said, How do you feel? I said, Impending doom. That was my answer, impending doom. And they said, Well, why do you think you I said, I don't have a clue, it's why I'm here. You know, I woke up this morning and I am just absolutely scared to death. About what? I don't know. You know, I can't, I can't tell you. So, 
this bothered me from the standpoint of, it almost made me feel as if, we talked last week a lot about, uh, about prosperity preachers, how we said that prosperity preachers tend to, to go down the path of, well, if you're sick and you're, and you're poor, you don't have enough faith. Well, if you're, if you're strung out on anxiety and you don't know what to do and you can't, don't understand the feelings you're having, well, then you must not be trusting in Jesus enough. And, and I wondered how that strikes people. Um, and what's your thoughts this morning on mental, the, the term mental illness, right? If, if, the, if the Bible tells us that we should cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us, do we trust that? And is that enough? Or... Is the brain in an organ like any other organ in the body? And can it get sick and need treatment just the same as if you have an upset stomach? And I thought I would just poke a little bit this morning after reading this and say, what do y'all think? And where does it go? Any experiences you want to share? I had a... When I came back from Iraq the last time, um, I was diagnosed with, as most of us are, coming out of the Army with PTSD. And I was going through an unexpected divorce. Um, very depressed. I mean, just, I, I kind of identified my whole life, my marriage. And to, to lose that, and especially because I'm a devout Christian, I'm, I'm doing all the right things, you know, being, I, I hadn't my whole life, but you know, at that point in my life, I was, I was, you know, as far as what a Christian can be, I wasn't perfect, but, <clears throat> and it just, you know, I'm like, what, what the heck? And yeah, I went and um, luckily, Thank God I had a, um, a very Christian psychologist that I talked to. I had some very Christian counselors that I talked to. And, you know, they, they talked to me about the medicine side of things. And I did for a while. Um, so oft. And it, I don't know. It, I didn't seem to feel as depressed. But what I noticed real fast was I didn't seem as happy either. Mm -hmm. Get like mutes. You know, at the ends of the spectrum. The one thing that helped me more than anything was, um, as crazy as it is to say, um, being the casualty assistance and notification officer for a gentleman who lost his son in Afghanistan. Helping that family through that helped me through all of that. And I'm not saying it all went away. <clears throat> a loud bang goes off right now, and I'm still, I mean, I get pretty shaky. So I, I believe that PTSD is real insofar as, you know, there's, you know, having that, that post-traumatic stress, you know, it's, it's real. But I, I, can, I can see John MacArthur's point. I definitely can't, I, you know, I... I I believe that anything that you know that you go through in life, if you have enough faith in God, it will get you through it. But, and that's just my story. I can't. I can't. Well, and that's the thing people. I think you're going to see too is that you're going to see that everybody's going to have a, a slightly different take on this, and, and and you're going to find that there are there are folks who have been Christians, devout Christians, their entire life, who will go through some sort of something that will be described as a mental illness. And is that a reflection of not enough faith? Is it a reflection of sin in your life? Is it a, and as a, and as a Christian counselor, right? If I ever have the opportunity to talk to somebody who's in those situations, the first thing we start with is discipleship, right? The first thing we start talking about is, let's talk about your relationship with Christ. Let's talk about where you are in that walk. And if it's solid and they believe you know, they're, they're, they're right where they're supposed to be, and yet they're experiencing all these things. 
you almost feel like you're you're you almost have no no arrows left in your in your quiver because okay, well, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Well, I am trusting in the Lord. I heard you mention that John MacArthur and I heard you mention that they spend in their lives. And, it, the, and again, I didn't look it up. I probably should have looked it up instead of trying to go mind to mind and brain. <laughs> but it was, uh, wasn't there a the blind man or lame? And, you know, the disciples said, who sent his mother and father, you know, or what, you know. And it was, Christ said, you know, this is to glorify in the Father of God, you know what I'm saying, whatever. Um, I, I think, you know, mental illness it is real. Physical illness is real. Uh, I think God can do miracles for either or. I mean, that's proven scripturally. Um, I do think that we are sinners, you know, without a doubt. Um, who am I to say that I'm blind because I'm sinful? You know, who am I to say that I have PTSD? Or you know, uh, that's to God. I, I don't know. I, I'll never, well, one day maybe, you know. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I'm just sitting here thinking that, you know, who, <laughs> I was just thinking that's those scriptures. And again, I may have totally got it wrong. And if I did, want someone please look Well, but when we see when we see things like that in Scripture, and we see that the explanation is given that well, per, you know, perhaps this man was blind so that so that we could we could actually witness God healing him, and we could see the miraculousness and the wonderful uh, results we get from God's grace. We also see where there are people who are described as being essentially out of their minds. And we see Jesus cast out demons. And we see the Bible tell us that they are now in their right mind. We have the lady who was following around the disciples, right? And then she's and then she's she's putting on these shows to make money for these people, essentially. And she's calling these people out as as uh, you know worshippers of Jesus. And she's demon possessed. And and clearly that's a it's a, it's a reference to her being not in her right mind. Yet, when the demon's gone, she's okay. So, uh, there was a, a time out in the old uh, the uh, gathering place where we were we were talking about demon possession a little bit, and LD was out there, and he just flat out looked at me right in the one glance. He goes, "John, do you believe all this? Do you believe in this demon possession stuff? Do you?" And I said, "Well." But Bible speaks of it, so I have no choice. And he said, exactly. <laughs> okay, well, you set me up. What was you doing? I'm not sure how to, how to interpret that. He said, that's my position as well. He says, I don't know that I've ever witnessed it. Don't know that I've ever experienced around, you've been around it. Don't know for sure. But apparently it is, it is legitimate. It is real. It has happened, and it does happen. And, and so... And so to John MacArthur's point, there has to be definitely some things that we would describe as in our in our society today as mental illness that have to be coming from um, moral issues that are, are coming from demon influence and possession. There, there, these things have to, to be a factor. And I have to say to his point about drug companies and profiteering. There has to be a factor because any avenue that people can make money off of tends to become a wider and wider avenue as time goes on. It's, 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 what's that? Uh, everybody always runs with that example. It's they come out with a drug that treats something you didn't know you had. Okay, now I'm on it. Potential side effects of this is great because we have a drug for that. That's right. Yes, and those cause side effects. You know, but so you get that both. Yes, but I think uh, one of the most difficult things in this discussion we're talking about is because you talk about your heart, you talk about your liver, you talk about something like that. But when it comes to the brain, we think we think of the brain, which is the mind, which some people <coughs> conflate with the soul. Mm -hmm. You know, this is you, but we have to be careful with that because very clearly. 
There's people that will have a stroke and they've forgotten 90% of everything they've ever learned, people they knew. They get Alzheimer's. You talk about uh, Polly, and you might not even know you were married to someone. So it's like, does that mean Polly's soul is ill? Or is it, I'd say that's mental illness, you know? And when you talk about, well, is it real? I can tell you that you imbibe alcohol, your mind thinks differently. It's a chemical. You, 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 uh, same thing if you do pot, same thing if someone injects you with the drill, just start your heart again and all that work. If you've been in pain, you've got morphine, or the doctor, and all of a sudden you're on cloud nine, you're <coughs> <really> happy. <coughs> Chemicals, we know without a doubt, influence the phrase that our mind is working on. And then the difficult Caffeine. part, Kathy, <laughs> and so the difficult part is where, where is the side, the, the, the mind, which is, heavily influenced by the brain and the soul, where do they intersect yeah. and meet? Where do they, where are they separate? Where, because we think sin is in the soul and our metaphorical heart, not, not you know, what we always say in the heart. And that's, that's a very difficult conversation because I don't think any of us has that answer. But it's, it's easy, you know, oh, I lost a finger in the tractor. It hurt really bad. I needed some painkillers or something, you know, some Advil or surgery physically to fix me. That's not my mind. But as soon as you start complaining the mind, yeah, and, and because that's that's what drives how we drive our bodies and what decisions we make with our bodies, it becomes very gray. Uh, I don't. There was when Ann was in in her coma. And she was in the intensive care unit, and Jordan was there with me. They had come in and told me that they, they did a, 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 the brain scan, and essentially there was no activity. Those, those were their words no activity. And I looked over at Jordan and I said, Jordan, what does any of this mean? I said, if the Bible tells us that. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. At what point are we absent from the body? And he stood there and he shook his head. He said, John, I don't know. He said, she can be with the Lord right now. And because we have these machines hooked up to her, we think she's still here. He said, I honestly don't know. And I said, I don't know either. I said, this is just one of those things that is opening up so many things you think you know and you think you understand. And then you get into a situation where you really are, are you're just reaching for answers and, and you find that you don't know. And for me, that's where faith has to just take control, right? For me, I, just, I had no choice but to go into to, to, to cruise control and go, I believe in God. I trust God. I don't have the mind of God. God knows way more than I do, and I and, and I've I've been for years now leaning on Him for everything. I'm not going to stop now. You know. So we, we had our family meeting. I told them they said Anne's not going to come out of this and all that. And Rachel, I remember she looked at me. She said, "Okay, so you told us what the doctor said and everything." She says, "So are we giving up?" I said, "Of course not. No, we're not giving up." I said, I'm just, I just want you to understand, this is what they say. I said, we've leaned on God to get through this to this point, and we're not going to stop doing that. We're going to keep doing that. And we're going to just trust in him that whatever he wills is, is what's right. <coughs> and so I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to come, what I want to come back around to is mental illness has become this checkbox, right? Oh, I, I'm, feeling, I, I'm feeling down, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that. You go to the, the doctor, oh, well, okay, well, then boom, you have mental illness. You have generalized anxiety disorder, right? It's, it's, it's so easy for them to slap a label on you and throw a pill at you. And, and I, I guess I don't have the answers to any of this, but I think that any extreme approach on one side or the other is the wrong approach. This is, this is what I've just been trying to put together in thought processes. We as Christians, absolutely have to have to turn to scripture for our first answers. I, I feel that. 
I feel that we have to trust in, the, in, in what God tells us in his word, that we are to lean on him. We are to trust in him. We are to hand our, 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 all of our burdens and everything over to him. And I think there's a logical argument that says, if we are truly in him like we're supposed to be, that the peace that surpasses all understanding is the peace that will take away those anxieties, take away those things we feel. But at the same time, we live in a fallen world. We live in a world that is constantly battling with us and we're constantly dealing with things. And like you said, we don't have any problems going to the doctor when this is wrong and this is wrong and that is wrong. Or, and, and, and this all came to, to light a couple of weeks ago because the Apostle Paul tells Timothy, be sure to drink a little wine for your stomach. You know, he's telling him, you have an ailment. This is something that can help you. You need to partake of it. Now, was that the, is that the meaning behind it? I don't know, but that's what it seems to be saying. And so if there are things that will help get through that, should it be a stigma? Should it be something that we avoid? You know, I, I came in here this morning, actually I did this last night, going, I want to bring it to you guys because it bugs me. Because I can't sit here and say, oh, you know, if you're going through this problem, you should go see a doctor. Yeah. You know? Does it come down, you get that, you ever get that feeling where it's like, if you really think there's just this magic bullet solution, this one easy thing you do this and it's all, doesn't that seem like, mm, that sounds too good to be true. And But yet that's, we are we're in that, we're very imminent gratification, imminent resolution. So I, I like to think, you know, if you're approaching any type of issue, especially health, mental or physical, that if you're approaching it where this is a tool to help me, but I also got to, there's going to be some effort on my part, you're probably in a good place. You know, it's, you're, you're on a path to try and make yourself better. You're putting in some work there. And it's, whereas they're just like, oh, you got this problem, here's a pill. You got this problem, here's a pill. And, you know, when they, when they talk about, here, here's your, your monthly injection for your weight, but you also should consider eating healthier. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that, what is, what's that, uh, the, the rub? Here's the right. rub, you know, that's, <laughs> so. But, but, but is, I guess he goes back to the parachute analogy, does it not? When we start, start talking about Jesus being the answer to everything. That, you know, you've heard me say it a hundred times, the, the parachute analogy. When, when we tell people, trust Jesus, trust Jesus, trust Jesus, it, it'll, it'll fix everything. Of pull the yeah. ripcord, but well, <laughs> that, that's trust awesome. him. But you go ahead and pull the ripcord. <laughs> well, that's, that's, I like that. <laughs> that's that's pretty good. good. He gave you a ripcord. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of it's an identity issue, or in America. <coughs> when I talk about this stuff, I, I always have to mention I have coming from the American mm-hmm. standpoint because that's all I know. But I think everybody wants to put their identity in something. Or and also there's a there's a victim. Everybody mm-hmm. everybody wants to be a victim. That's true. Like oh, I can't focus it on anything. They said I have ADHD. That's why. Oh, good. I have an answer now. So people's identity are rooted in their circumstances. Like I'll have ADHD. I think mental illness is real. I mean, I think demons are real too. But I think John MacArthur. I think the problem with John MacArthur right now is he's very harsh. Like I listened to a sermon. Somebody. He's mean. He's mean. Yeah. <laughs> I listened to a sermon one time and he was ridiculing women for working out and like taking care of themselves. And I was like, oh, this is this is an evil sort of I mean you sound evil. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's he's starting to sound old and bitter. Yeah. Yeah. It's very strange. Yeah. But anyway, I think you know, I think I I just think when people realize that they have a focus issue or whatever, I think the ADHD can become a crutch. It can become your whole identity. Like, 
and and in a way it becomes an idol like yeah Mm -hmm. this sickness is it it rains over me and i can't Mm -hmm. you know i can't focus i can't do this because i can't focus or i'm too hyper or this or that you know i know this is I've, I've had anxiety like you mentioned before too, where I thought, "Oh, I'm done. I'm dead. I'm done. Yeah, it's I, over. Yeah, I, it's horrible. I rode in the ambulance. I rode in the ambulance, you know, and they're like, "What do you feel like right now?" And I said, "You see that telephone pole over there? I felt like I could run through it." And they're like, "Have you taken drugs today?" I said, "No, <laughs> no not today. No, but I want some." <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have no explanation as to why that happened. Uh, but it didn't root my identity in it. Like I'm an anxious. I have anxiety, so you know, God did know me of that. And then uh, there was a time where I thought, you know, I couldn't focus at work, and I was really struggling mentally. Like maybe I have ADHD, and I didn't go to the doctor or anything for that. But I thought I don't think I have ADHD. I think I just hate what I'm doing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I can't focus on. It. So you know, I need, to, I need to go do something else. Here's one thing that gets me though: if if I an example, right? I, I try to try with with the, the open sores on my legs for months and months and years to try and get these things to heal up and get better and go away. Seeing doctors, seeing doctors, seeing doctors, praying, praying, praying. <laughs> and then one day, my doctor just looks at me and says, "You know those things you're taking for your arthritis? I'd like to see you stop taking those. I think they could be a problem." I'm like, well, it keeps me walking. He's like, "Yeah, but." I got a feeling it might be having something to do with the sports. I think maybe you ought to lay off of them. And within four months of being off of them, all of the stuff cleared up on my legs and went away. So you tell that to, to you share that, and of course, I'm, I'm praising God for what's happened, right? So I'm praising God that that through all the prayers, He led me through whatever course I went through. He allowed me to experience whatever pain I mean, There were nights I was up crying because I was so much pain. And he allowed all that to happen. And then he leads me to a conversation with my doctor. And suddenly things get better. And I give him all the glory for all of that. If someone goes through a mental journey and problems and they come to a doctor who prescribes something and they come out the other side praising God for the fact that they are now functional and can deal and, you know, are are now involved in ministry or whatever it may be, that story doesn't always have the same ring to it as the guy who had the physical ailment get cleared up. Yeah. (laughs) Didn't know if I should share this story, but I'm going to. So I was with this girl, and she, uh, I guess I didn't believe in the mental illness. I was one of those, you know, I was not going to do that. I was a bunch of nonsense. But she said she was bipolar, and I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, so we're going on, and then uh, she you know, started having these issues coming up and saying all this stuff. I'm like, that is crazy. You know, but I've, been with, I've been with her for a while, but she ended up getting hospitalized. She was in the hospital for like 28 days. And, oh, wow. you know, she she had her master's degree and everything. This girl's really smart, but, you know, she was the craziest one in there, you know, by, at some point in this. And I'm like, man, that really is something to this. It kind of made me change my whole attitude about it. I mean, I do think everything is um, it's over-medicated. You know, I think as humans, we've got emotions that are negative and positive and Anytime anybody has a negative emotion, they want to medicate that. Like, well, yeah, you don't need that. I mean, you know, I think of Star Trek and Next Generation with Data. I don't know. You know, you can turn off that emotion. Yes. You know, and we're humans. We can't do that, but people try to. The medication. It's just. Uh, but I do think it's very real. And I, I'm like you. I think yeah. it's. Well, some people they there's some chemical imbalance or whatever it is that they have to have something. Just like you know, you have an arthritis pill. And you have something that. I I think when people like John MacArthur, the only mental illnesses he could say off the top of his head are anxiety, (coughs) depression, and ADHD. There, in my life, in my real life, I say I can diagnose you with those things. Right. I'm licensed to do that. Do I think everyone has ADHD and that's that's overly diagnosed and all of those things? But like, I also have girls that have so much trauma because of things their own fathers have done to them. And that's not 
the, it's not the girl's moral, it's not her fault that those things happen to her. So th- in those situations, I think it's hard to say, it's okay because Jesus is great. Like they have to process a lot of those things to <coughs> land on Jesus because your own father shouldn't do those things to you. And so I think if the only illnesses you can name are like the top five, right. maybe you shouldn't speak on it. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't want to stay in your lane, sir. But I think a lot of things like the anxiety and depression, all, this, <coughs> all of them you have to take to the Lord. But like bipolar, if it's not treated, you're going to end up in a hospital for 28 days being the craziest yeah. one there. I would have never guessed. I mean, some I would have never guessed. Yeah. You know, just, and wow. it's something you can't, if it's something you can't handle on your own, like you said, and you take it to the Lord, it's still not healing. You should get the help that you deserve because you deserve to live a good and faithful life. I want to pause it one more thing for you. So I like, sometimes I find comfort in this remembering how far we have come from where God created us. So God made us in his image and planted us in the garden, right? That was it. There were, he didn't give us motorcycles and cars. He didn't give us long-lasting uh, pesticides or things to make sure the crop goes even more profitably. Or, and so I'm not saying everything we do out there now is simple, but man has does play God to some extent. We were, you know, and there's, there's good things about it and there's bad things about it. But unfortunately, we've, we've, we've created a very complicated world that we live in. And there are things that it can affect us we don't even know. And I like to think a lot of that is it's just the byproduct of being simple and imperfect. And and I think there are very noble ventures that people take to try and make the world better for everyone. Then there's others that don't. And even the good ones, the best of intentions, can lead to horrible outcomes. And some of the worst intentions can, weirdly, God likes to spin those and make good things out of it. You never know. And But what we end up with is just um, things where now people talk about illnesses that they would have scoffed at 100 years ago, 200 years ago. Maybe they didn't exist back then. Maybe they're only here now because of the new Dow Chemical Plant. I don't know. <laughs> you are thinking against Dow Chemical. I don't know. I was always sure that. You didn't listen to a podcast. <laughs> my, yeah. my running thing is, you know, as Katie yeah. will never let me spray it down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Weeds. I said, what if the good people of Monsanto got to hide from me? I didn't trust them wholeheartedly. <laughs> as the courts. <laughs> so. Pastor Steve Ballin in Australia. He said this so many times when we were there. There's a delicate balance of grace and truth. So the truth is, Jesus can heal all things. Absolutely. Mental illness, all the stuff. But the grace is, hey man, you might need some medicine. For you know, take some medicine. Go to the doctor. You know, the truth is, Jesus can heal all things. But we got to come alongside people that are struggling and say, hey, you need to get some physical help. Some, yeah. You need something's going on. I can't answer it. We'll, we'll pray about it. In the meantime, go to the doctor and and seek healing, physical healing, and let's let's stick with this and see what happens. You know, because oftentimes that's the path that you get led down is going to see someone who knows how to help you. Yeah. And I, it's it's not just God flipping the switch. It's God saying you're going to experience this, and I'm going to get you through it. And we're going to have people help you do it. And so I, I don't want to ever say that Jesus is not enough because he's everything. He's everything. But through him, we, we can find the answers to everything. And he'll right? lead us to people. Yeah. It's not always him saying, oh, done. Yeah. Sometimes it's, what well, did he say, Paul, to him and his mm-hmm. Go to him. And then he'll do it for you. And the doctor that I was talking about, the psychiatrist that I was talking about, he said that he said, you know, he said I like to believe that in, in God's infinite wisdom that He created doctors that He helped us learn these things and these medicines so we can help people. Yeah, exactly. And he said, yeah. you know, but he said the, the, the other side of that is if you become dependent on that medicine and not on on God to get you where you're going. He said, you can use this as a crutch to get you better 
But he said, at some point, you got to come off the crutch. Well, I'm going to I'm going to stop us there because we're going to get him out of here. Uh, <laughs> I'm all right. All right. Well, but but thank you all for for just having this discussion with me this morning because I I I was going to go someplace else, so I wasn't really prepared to lead this like I should have been. Uh, but I read this a couple of posts last night. I'm going. I just want to come and talk about it because it's it's troubling to me that that we. What I'm concerned with is that people who are genuinely being helped by therapies and medicines will read something like this and go, well, that Christianity stuff is not for me. And they will run from Christ because they think that one man's comments represent all of Christianity. And, and, and I think we have to be as, as believers, as those who are, are walking a walk, be prepared in some manner to have these kinds of discussions to lead people to Christ and get their relationship deeper with Him and not push them further away from Him. And that's the challenge that I see in this is, man, don't don't make people, where's your compassion? You know, where's your compassion for those who are suffering? Don't look at them and go, well, you just don't have enough faith. That's not compassion. That's, you know, that, that's, I, wow. I almost said that's Catholic school nuns with a, with a ruler, right? Yeah, but anyway, I almost said it. I did say it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop right there. And I appreciate your all time this morning. Let's close. Heavenly Father, Lord, just, Father, just give us the knowledge. <clears throat> give us the understanding. Give us the compassion. Help us to understand the things that, that, we, that we don't understand. And help us to find uh, to find you in the midst of all the situations where we just stand around and go, how do we help? What do we do? What do we say? Lord, we do trust you. And we, we, we know that your words are true. But sometimes it's difficult to know how to apply it. It's difficult to know what direction we're, we're supposed to, to send someone in. And just help us to understand, Lord, that, that there are times when Sometimes all we can do is just just pray and and follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, Lord. And even if we don't know the direction we're headed in, it will be the right one. Lord, thank you for this, this class and allowing us to have this discussion this morning. And just to be with all of us as we depart and help us to get through this week and do the things we need to do. And may we honor you in all that we do, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.